Welcome to our online lecture series, Radar in Action. My name is Jens Fiege and I'm glad to have you back here in our virtual presentation room. Today, we are back in our newest building, which was occupied in last summer. Um, not only are there many hardworking scientists researching here in our so-called signal processing think tank, but we also have a hall here with space for experimental systems and for several new large 3D printers for additive manufacturing of high frequency components. By the way, we are looking at that here at Radar in Action. Next June, exact dates will follow. Today, however, we are talking about rail inspection, more specifically about ballast condition assessment in modern railways using radar. We will go live to my colleague Stefan Rümmler in the hall here at the background and show our experimental system. But first, our colleague Tönpan Kingsuvana Po from the Institute of High Frequency Technology at RWTH Aachen University will introduce the project and his motivation. Please go ahead, Po. Thank you very much, Jen, for the introduction and welcome everyone to my presentation. Today I would like to present my research in the topic of ballast condition assessment in modern railway using radar. My name is Tertan Kim Suanapong, and I am a doctoral student at the Institute of High Frequency Technology at the UTH Aachen University. This is the cooperation project between Fraunhofer FHR and my institute. Today, me and my colleague Stefan Krumbel will explain it to you. I will divide my presentation into four parts. Start with the motivation, then explain to you why we should ground penetrating data as the Our then Stefan will show you how the measurement system works and end up with question and answer. So you might have a question why we are interested in real transportation. According to the European Real Research Advisory Council, they said that real transportation is the most efficient way to transport passengers and products on land. How do they know it? Comparing with road transportation, considering four important factors, energy consumption, CO2 emission, capacity of the system, and the most important in uh, safety. In those four important factors, rail transportation always wins, and the rail wins by far. One important thing that we are focusing in this research is train track. So if everyone thinks about train track, definitely the first picture that come up to your mind is these two parallel metal rail support by wood or concrete sleeper and the gray rock called ballast stone. But in reality, it consists of underground structure that we cannot see. The top layer or the gray rock called ballast layer followed by smaller size of stone sub ballast. And before the natural ground is subgrade layer. These structures have important functions to hold the track in place as the train low over it. At the same time, it will distribute the waste of the chain to natural ground. It is also an important part to drainage um, the water or melting snow to the drainage system. The previous slide showed typical structure of the track, but actually there are another special kind of track like high-speed train track. It comprises five to six more underground structure or to increase green space in urban areas. Green tech has been developed. It made track maintenance even more difficult as the entire structure was covered with grass. We have now seen the complexity of the track structure. Therefore, if the underground structure is not properly maintained or the problem arises there, it can lead to delay, loss of properties, or loss of life. I will give an example of problems that oftenly allies inside track structure. The first example is a cavitation within the track structure. When it rains, the rainwater washes away part of the track structure with it little by little. When it repeats over a long period of time, create water cavity. When the water dries up, air cavity will form, and this is where the problem occurs. Over time, this air cavity will getting bigger and bigger until finally, track corrupts. 
Another example that makes ballast quality to deteriorate is ballast falling. Ballast falling is the process by which space between stone becomes filled with old material. This full material is mainly derived from crash ballast when it was repeatedly pressed by the waves of the train, but also from organic material caused by pollution or effect of the weather erosion. These are just two examples. In fact, there are many other factors that degrade the performance of the track. So how do we mostly detect these problems nowadays? Because this problem often form inside the underground structure, which is invisible. So all we can do is wait until it, uh, we can notice it. Or collective maintenance, which is sometimes too late. The corrupting of the track could lead to life-threatening accidents. In some cases, we might notice something unusual on the surface, like geometry distortion or mud breathing, but we can only observe the surface. Another way is to analyze the sound as the train lands and detect anomaly. As you can see in the top right graph, show abnormal spectrum in the green circle compared to the normal situation in the bottom graph. But it is not accurate enough to identify problems that arise under the track structure. This is where GPR or ground penetrating radar has become an attractive tool for real track inspection. GPR provides non destructive tests. It can tell what happened underground and can be installed on a mobile vehicle. So you don't have to stop train operations while inspecting. But there are also challenges. GPR require interpretation skill and the performance are deducted in some cases, such as in high conductivity material or heterogeneous structures. The last one, before I move into further detail, first I would like to explain the basics of GPR system. The principle of GPR is the same as typical radar, but instead of pointing to the sky, we are pointing to the ground. We transmit the signal, uh, the wave impacts the ground, and then reflect back, show as first receiver called, called ground ball. Then traveling tooth medium, hit the object and reflect back to the receiver. This receive signal is called A scan, which is one dimension data. This is comparable to length profile in typical radar, but in reality, the receive signal we have an additional cutter from environment. This is why we need signal processing and algorithm to help. In order to understand the results, normally we interpret GPR data in four different forms. Continuing from the previous slide, when the sensor is moving, collect several consecutive A scans, creating two dimensions image or B scan. If we continue measuring and keep stack multiple B scans in sequence, generate three dimension data, reconstruction of the ground structure called C scan. Slides of a C scan can be used to represent 2D sections at different orientations. When the slides refer to constant time, it is sometimes called T scan or depth slide. Of course, we are not the only group of research who address this topic of real tech inspection by applying GPR. But the advantage of our research is to apply machine learning for different tech inspections, like the detection of cavity. What if we are able to accurately find the point of the problem and know exactly what the problem is, what kind of the problem, and what position within what depth? Of course, we are not are, however, machine learning algorithm requires a large number of training data sets. Additionally, this data set has to represent widely varieties of tech conditions. This would be an enormous effort to provide such a database on real tech measurement. A simulation of high accuracy model can provide this kind of data set. This brings in our current research. Let me show you one example why we need it. Assuming machine learning algorithm as a child, we have to teach him to give him more experience, need to better decision making logic. For example, we need 1000 data to teach it. With the measurement method, it requires years to implement. 
but with our proposed model, you can get it done in a few weeks. In our research, we, divide, we divided into two parts. First, simulation part, but last stone in the models are generated using Blender. The stones are then voxelized by Python script and import to GPR Max for EM simulation. We use this output data to train machine learning algorithm. In the other hand, measurement path, which we have created measurements model with real material. The output data from the measurements will use to test data to approve this algorithm. This is the whole picture of our research. For the simulation model, currently we usually use homogeneous model for the simulation, but that makes a huge difference from the actual measurement data. Therefore, the simulation result cannot be used to train machine learning algorithm. Some research use a fairly cool model, but we need the model that as cross as to the real ballast. Not only that, we also need the model that is flexible to adjust the ballast parameters to meet various standards. Therefore, we develop our own model, the Gravel model. From the picture, uh, we can see that every stone has a different shape individually. Our proposed model can customize size shape and number of ballast stones. We using gravity to tighten the ballast as shown in the animation. These stones are dropped down into box by gravity, makes they pack tight and then layer by layer. In the following simulations, every stone was made under standard. Size of all stones are between 31.5 to 63 centimeters. It meets European standard grade D to F and the American standard ARIMA number 24. And we are able to customize it according to another standard as well. After we create the stone, we generate two general conditions in order to prove the proposed gravel model. The first one is clean ballast model. It is a complete real-way model that can perform at full potential as design. Second one is fold ballast model. This model is a railroad that has been used for a while and it is dusty. The sand replaced as space between stone, causing the properties to be greatly reduced. For clean ballast model, we compare between typical homogeneous model and our proposed gravel model. Then we create measurements model with a real material in the box. Start with eight centimeter of sand layer, put 50 centimeter of clean ballast on the top, then run the measurement system for three hours. After simulations in GPR Max, it can be seen that the B scan of gravel model uh, in the middle has more dropping reflected signal due to its uh, gravel structure, while the homogeneous model on the left has no such phenomenon. And you can see the consistency of the gravel model simulations result and the actual measurement result. In this slide show the wave propagation inside the gravel model on the, on the right compared to homogeneous model on the left. It can be clearly seen that signal scattering effect only occur in the gravel model. Why in the homogeneous model, none of these effects happen at all. Therefore, we did the same step for our second model, the fold ballast. We create homogeneous model and gravel model. Then we create measurement setup. The simulation results also show more realistic, more realistic in proposed model. You can see huge crowd bout interface as fold layer followed by sand base layer. Next, I will talk about cavity simulation. In this stage, the model is based on fold material from the last part. To study the cavity, we use cryacrylic tube, act as air or water cavity, placed at 45 degree angle in the ballast layer. The specialty of this model is that we use rough surface heterogeneous sand to create fold, la fold layer. And to compare, the measurement setup also creates as well. In this case, a B scan is shown as example for both the simulations and measurement data. 
The position and the dimensions of the cavity is indicated with red box in the image. The dashed line represents the cutting plane for that slide in the next slide. Uh, it can be observed the complex scattering mechanism created by Ballard. It's also interesting to appreciate that in the T scan or depth slide, the scattering pattern generated by the Ballard in measurements and simulations are apparently very similar as expected. Here, we are able to determine positions orientation, shape, and depth of the cavity. Now, let's see how the system works. I am delighted to pass on this lecture to my colleague, Stefan, the stage is yours. Hello from my side. I'm standing here at our experimental area and I give you a short explanation of our experimental system and how we performed our measurement. But let me start by our components we used for our experimental models. Our main component is the ballast. Why is this material so attractive for railroad constructions? First, it can bear the heavy weight of the trains. Second, at the same time, it provides some flexibility. If a train rolls over the rail, its height changes within a few centimeters, which is a wanted behavior of the rail. And lastly, this cracked or uh, crushed stones have sharp edges to create a stable rail bed. Dimension standards are, exist to guarantee the right ballast behavior. Um, the present ballast agrees with a particle size of 31.5 millimeters up to 63 millimeters. These values are not meant to be exclusive, so some outliers are accepted. For example, such stone one, such, such small stones, and for example, these large stones. However, this material isn't perfect. Um, this ballast as well as the rail track itself ages over the years. Some stones crush into smaller particles and the edges become more and more smooth. This fills the gaps between the stones, which are essential for the stability. Furthermore, the subgrade material sometimes penetrates into the ballast and additionally, dirt, dust and soil enters these gaps from above. This force, you know, this huge variety of sources for a fouling of the ballast, uh, is, so there's no uh, outstanding choice for a fouling material, which forced us to take an easy to handle material like sand. Besides fouling, we used this material for as a subgrade material in our experimental models. The third, component in our experimental models are used to create cavities of specific size. For this purpose, we applied these objects and uh, cylinder and spheres. They are made of acrylic glass. And this is uh, uh, necessary to keep, uh, to have non-metallic components so uh, there's, in other words, there's uh, no metal content. So to keep reflections by the or of these objects as low as possible. Additionally, they provide a very thin boundary, and this is also addressed to keep reflections as low as possible. Why did we took the effort to prepare experimental models? Um, well, the goal wasn't to create something realistic, close to a, a real rail track. Instead, the goal was to verify the simulations. That means that the synthetic model and the experimental model have to be as similar as possible in its structural and material composition. But, okay, and... Uh, Let's follow here. For the support of our experimental models, we applied this box. 
This one suits the necessity of absence of metal components, but still can bear the weight of the material. But let's have a closer look inside the box. Um, here you can see an example which was well, which shows a cross section of the models we prepared. So over here you have the clean ballast, while over here is the fouled uh, ballast until this level. Above it, there's still a layer of clean ballast. At this position, a sphere is placed to form a cavity inside the material. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, for the data acquisition, we use this experimental system, which can be described as a GPR scanner. Um, for a test object like this, it performs a GPR measurement along a predefined grid of measurement positions. But let's have a, a, let's have an impression how it operates. First, an initialization of the experimental system is necessary. And afterwards, one can specify any wanted grid of measurement positions. And then the system operates automatically and performs the measurement of the test object. Right now, we're moving to the first measurement position and the current grid I prepared consists of just four measurement positions. First, second, third, and the last position. So you can imagine in our experiments we performed, we had a larger grid consisting of approximately 7,000 measurement positions, and this takes quite a while. Okay, uh, well, uh, the largest component you are aware is the uh, free access mobile frame. You already saw uh, its performance. And yes, here at the moving platform attached, there is our current sensor that is a very um, um, which is a, a sensor consisting of two antennas. One operates as the transmitter and the other one as the receiver. But this sensor is not mandatory to the frame. Other sensors can be attached as well and even an array of those. So what else? Um, an arbitrary waveform generator generates the signal and the receiving is done by an uh, oscilloscope. Together with this uh, sensor, uh, this system operates in the general bandwidth of GPR. So in numbers, the system operates within the range of 400 megahertz up to four gigahertz. So we are able to detect targets that are in size above some centimeters. With these words, I reach the end of my presentation and I hand over to Third Pan for a last conclusion. Thank you, Stefan. Now we have already seen the overall feature of the research. Then let me conclude everything. I will propose for the can provide you a very fast prototyping in control and development with exact geometry you need, why it is still flexible enough, allowing you to adjust or balance parameters according to your standard. And of course, it is cost efficient. These are great features to generate a huge number of synthetic training data to train machine learning algorithms. And this is ongoing um, research. In the next step, we will use this synthetic training data to study and choose an appropriate machine learning algorithm. Applying signal processing to measure to, to measurement data and increasing the complexity of the model to study effect of 
additional elements in railway structure. And finally, we plan to test our system on the real train track. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you are interested, you can find more details of our uh, research in our published paper. Thank you. Great. Thank you both for your presentations. I do not want to waste time. We have some questions which we want to answer. Um, so the first question, do you use in the sensor a radar with synthetic aperture? No, not in this configuration. So uh, this can be done as well, but yes, right now we haven't uh, used that so far. So um, in the simulation data, I think this is a question for POM. In the simulation data, are you using the FDT simulation or are you using the EM simulator? Can you please tell more about your radar signal model? Okay. Uh, firstly, we are using GPR Max simulation model, which is our open source simulation program. And yes, it provides finite differential time domain or FDGD method. Um, we use this program because it's widely used for GPR research around the world. Moreover, it can accurately solve Maxwell, Maxwell equations in uh, three dimensions using, using FDGD method that suits for our uh, near field calculations. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, practical question for the next, next steps. Where will you put the system on a train? Uh, yes. Uh, we are planning to attach this uh, system on the maintenance train. Therefore, you can collect the data while you are landing this uh, maintenance train while um, there are low tra uh, train traffic or during a uh, close hour of the um, track. OK, is there any analytical modeling of wave propagation in ballast in your research, or is it just based on simulation? All right, our model is based on GPR max simulation program. So it's kind of electromagnetic simulation. Therefore, um, we didn't make any special or customized um, calculations on that purpose. OK, um, here are some very practical questions, many questions. Um, at what speed would the sensor be able to move to still ensure detection? Uh, yes, I think it depends on uh, the customer's requirement. We are now able to um, op optimize it between um, accuracy and speed. Now the with, with the accuracy, we can reach one centimeter of, of our resolution. But you have to uh, accept a, a longer measurement time. So if you can accept lower resolution, it will increasing the speed uh, measurement speed time. OK, and the next question is, what is the typical detection depth that can be reached? I can also answer this as well. Um, it is depends on the condition. At the moment, we can reach meters, but as I uh, mentioned at the beginning, the challenge of using GPR system is also the um, moisture of the ground. So I could answer it, it is depends on the situation.
Yeah, okay. Here's the question now. Is the smallest size of cavity can be detected? Um, maybe Stefan answer this. Um, the smallest yes. size which can be detected. Yeah, the smallest size uh, is which is detectable uh, according the signal frequency is approximately around five centimeters. But if you uh, be aware of the size of the stones and the gaps in between, this is very close to that size. So it ranges. Uh, so in our expected size, it is uh, something around uh, 10 or 20 centimeters in diameter. How would you deal with the interference and the multipass reflections introduced by the metal tracks, including the bolts and nuts of the railroad? Yeah, we uh, we haven't addressed this topic, but that's a very important question. So uh, this uh, is still a topic of research for a future work. So right now we didn't uh, address this so far. Good. So I think we have no time less. We have seven minutes over our time um, slot. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for attention and for taking the time for our presentation. If your question was not answered, please write us an email. Our colleagues, my colleagues will answer them immediately. Tomorrow morning we will receive a small survey about how you like our presentation. We would be happy if you would take a few minutes to answer it. And on Friday, you will receive the presentation slides of today's lectures. Finally, for today, I would like to point out the next presentations. Next week, we will fly high. We look from the sky to the ground. I mean, we will present how we can do real-time ZAR imaging, live aerial imaging in all weather conditions with Dr. Stefan Stanko. If you haven't registered yet, you can, of course, still do so. So we'll see you next time and stay healthy. Goodbye.